summer is here and the heat is here with it. So here in North Carolina, it is hot. I'm not sure where you are, but it is hot. And in those hot dog days of summer, one of my favorite things to do is to just enjoy a cold drink. And while that can go in many <laughs> directions of different minds, what I'm referring to is an iced herbal tea. And I'm going to show you three ways to make your own herbal tea, all of which you're probably very familiar with, but I want to give you a different variety on how to do this depending upon your time and the resources you may have. So today we're going to start with the first one and that is gonna be a sun tea. Now, whenever I'm doing an iced tea, you can easily go buy those, you know, tea bags, Lipton, Celestial Seasonings, like all those different brands. You can easily go buy those tea bags. And if that's what works for you, so be it and do it. Especially if you have something like that already in your home. But if you're ready to venture beyond that, I would recommend, you know, going and getting some dried herbs. This is my mint tea. And then I have some yarrow flowers. I have quite the little apothecary in my office of all kinds of dried things. And so whenever I'm making an herbal tea, I like to branch out from those tea bags and really do something just a little bit different. It does help with different flavors, but more importantly, it helps with different benefits according to the herb. So today we're doing mint and yarrow flowers. Um, and I use this book. This is the Encyclopedia of Herbal Medicine. I have many books, but this is one of my favorites because for each herb it gives you so much information the parts used how to prepare it what is it good for um, how to grow it so it's just such a great book and then in the back it's indexed two ways it's indexed via the type of symptom or pain or you know whatnot that you're trying to work through as well as a different index to actually go through the different um medicinal herbs, right? So you can search by mint and yarrow and hyssop, etc., right? Or you can search by pain relief, morning sickness, muscle cramps, those types of things. So this book is great. Peppermint, it's really good for digestion. It helps relax the gut muscles and it helps relieve nausea and it just overall soothes the digestive tract. And then we're also going to be using yarrow. I have dried yarrow flowers. And so for yarrow, yarrow is really good for wound healing, but that might be more in the tincture or poultice type application. For a tea, it's actually really good for blood pressure. So laboratory studies indicate that yarrow dilates blood vessels, thereby lowering blood pressure. And it works in part like conventional medicines known as ACE inhibitors, which are commonly prescribed for high blood pressure. Um, we don't have high blood pressure in our family, however, can't hurt to get some yarrow in our systems. So let's get started making our sun tea with dried herbs. And just to be safe here, I am not a medical professional. I am not a doctor and I am not here giving medical advice. Do your own research, choose your own herbs and make sure you're understanding what could or could not interact with something you're already taking. So this recipe could not be any simpler. And this ratio that I'm gonna show you is the ratio I use no matter the different type of, uh, or excuse me, the different method I'm using to make my tea. So I'm doing half a gallon of filtered water. I'm going to do half an ounce of my dried herbs. So I'll do a quarter of each here. But that's the ratio I use. So if I were doing a full gallon, it would be a full ounce. And a quarter ounce of mint. I am going to throw in a half gallon of filtered spring water. So now we have our quarter ounce of yarrow and quarter ounce of mint. Now my tea infuser doesn't actually fit in my half gallon mason jar. If you're using a jar with a wider mouth, you may not have that problem. So what I'm gonna be doing is now that my herbs are measured out, I'm putting them in this kind of like um, fine mesh bag 
and I'm going to put the bag right in the water. And that'll keep the herbs in the water. Hopefully I can close this properly. There we go. And then it allows it to soak. So depending on the size of jar you're using, right? If you have a wide enough mouth and your tea infuser can go in, then use that. Otherwise, again, you can also just throw the herbs in loose, but just make sure you have a way to strain them out. Or you can use some sort of cheesecloth or fine mesh bag, just as long as the herbs are contained. So we've got it lit it up, shake, and then we're gonna go put this outside. So you're gonna to wanna to keep it out in the sun anywhere from eight to 10 hours, but a really hot day where it's not raining, preferably the sun is shining down, beating down, and helping the water to get infused by all those beautiful herbs. We'll come back and strain that when it's time. So nighttime is descending, and I just brought the tea inside. You see that beautiful color that was imparted. Um, it's been outside for almost 10 hours. So I am going to take the lid off, take the bag out, and I've just got my compost bucket here. I'm just gonna strain as much of the liquid back into the jar and dispose of the actual tea in the compost. Okay, now what I like to do is take some honey this honey is a little crystallized, so it's perfect for the tea. Um, but I add about a quarter cup of honey, maybe a little less, maybe, maybe a little less, um, per half gallon. And this is really up to your liking, right? It's, you don't have to add any honey or any type of sweetener, but I try to go with about a quarter cup. Um, and then I'm just gonna shake it up to help get that honey dispersed. The tea is still warm, so it will help that crystallized honey liquefy a bit. Okay, and then the last thing I'll do is I'll take one lemon, cut the ends off, and that can go in the compost bucket. And then I get out, you know, maybe four or five slices. And I actually just throw them in. That's it. <laughs> it's just an easy way to make a really delicious and an herbal beneficial tea. So this is going in the refrigerator. This will last up to a week, maybe longer. Um, it won't last that long in this family. Feel free to play around with the different types of teas and tea leaves and maybe even flowers that you enjoy. And we'll come back in a little bit and we'll do the second way to make your own herbal iced tea. It's time to make our second batch of tea in the second way and that is just gonna be on the stove. So still a dried herb tea. Um, I'm gonna do a half a gallon just in a pot here on the stove and the ratio stays the same. So I'm doing a half a gallon of water, half an ounce of dried tea, and this time I'm gonna use raspberry leaf. So I'm gonna heat the water up and bring it to just about a boil. I don't usually get to the full boil for my tea. You just need it really hot. If you decide to use plain old sugar as your sweetener, I would recommend adding it now and I would do half a cup. So half gallon, half ounce, half cup is kind of the ratio that I use. If I were doing a full gallon, it'd be a full cup. Now, surely that is your own personal preference. That's subjective. That's just usually the ratio I go by. I'm going to be adding honey, probably actually about a quarter to a third a cup of honey, just like I did last time. And uh, I'll do that once the tea is done and still a little bit warm. But if you wanted to add regular pure cane sugar, you can do that here and that way it'll dissolve in the water. So 
So our tea has been steeping, I would say for about 20 minutes. I like to have it pretty strong. I'm just gonna take out the infuser and it's still very warm. It's not too hot, but it's warm. I'm gonna put it in my half a gallon mason jar. And just like before, I'm gonna add in about a quarter to maybe a third of a cup of honey, depending on how much we want. But because the tea is still fairly warm and my honey is crystallized, it will melt really well. And we're going to add in our four slices lemon and let it chill in the fridge. I wanted to show you, this is the first one I made, the sun tea, and this was two days ago. So this is gonna be empty tonight. <laughs> and so I find that I'm making this herbal tea every two to three days, and I'm doing half gallon at a time. You can certainly increase that volume if you'd like. So we'll come back in a couple of days and we'll make the third way of making your own herbal tea. Are you ready to make some tea? <laughs> We're gonna go for our third way of making tea here. I have one gallon of water on the stove. It is all ready steamy. I think it's ready to put our, our uh, herbs in. So this way utilizes fresh herbs from the garden. This is a bunch of lemon balm and African blue basil that I harvested from the garden this morning. I've already washed it, dried it, making sure there's no little stowaways of insects. And all I'm gonna do is put it in. Leaves, stems, the flowers, all of it. And we're gonna steep it just like any other tea. Now, with the dried tea, I had the ratio, right? Half an ounce, half gallon, half cup of some sort of sweetener, or up to you for the sweetener. Um, but for this, I wing it and I implore you to do the same, <laughs> especially if winging it is not your forte. Trust me, it'll still be delicious. So I just have a handful, a bunch here, and I'm gonna throw it in the water, move the water off of the burner and let it steep for about 20 to 30 minutes. Just don't burn yourself trying to get everything in. Oh, I can smell the lemon balm already when it hit the water. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it just like that for about 20 minutes or so, and then we'll come back and strain it. It's time to strain the tea. I just have a big bowl here, my compost bucket, and a small sieve because what I'm gonna do first is just take out the big solid pieces and then I'll strain the rest through the sieve into the bowl. What's so cool about using the African blue basil is that the water has got this like lavender hue to it. It is so pretty. And I'm gonna need a much bigger strainer here. Just a couple little bits. I'm gonna do the same thing with adding my honey. Now I'm gonna probably add about a half a cup because I have um, close to a gallon. Now remember, I like to not add too much sweetener. Um, a standard ratio, once again, half gallon, half ounce, half cup sweetener. That's for the dried herbs, but you sweeten it with what you prefer and with the ratio you prefer. I just love this color.
gorgeous. I love it. I love that purple color from the African blue basil. I hope this helps you, right? It is the season. Tis the season for the cool herbal iced teas. Think outside the tea bag box. Go a little bit different. See what's growing in your garden. See what dried herbs and teas you may already have on hand and do something different. Thanks for joining me today. Stay healthy. Stay well. Bye-bye.